guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Embark, and it is by TNG. It's for ages 14, 13 and up. It takes about 30 to an hour and a half, depending on the number of players, and it is a two to five player game. In Embark, you're basically going to be utilizing secret player screens to hide your crew members to have them go into boats. And then from the boats, they'll travel to the islands, and then from the islands, they'll live disembark and be placed along the islands, whether it be building things or exploring or mining in the mines, gathering resources. You'll do that round six times, and afterwards, whoever scored the most victory points is the winner because you're gonna try and colonize these islands as best as possible. Then fortunately for you, you've got many people that are also trying to colonize, people that don't want you to go in certain areas, and they're gonna try and do their best to allocate you elsewhere, whether they be fighting you or their captains themselves, explorers and miners and all kinds of stuff. It's also additional secret player, not secret player, but uh, variable player powers you can choose in the start of the game that come with quite a lot of them there. And of course, after six rounds, if you have the most victory points for being the best explorers on a bark, you'll win the game. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, little bluffing hidden placement game. So here we have the game Embark, and I went ahead and already set it up for three players. And as you can see, there are three different player colors. Everybody's going to get their 30 cubes or sailors, and they're also going to get these secret hidden boards. These are going to be facing away from people, and just going to be showing you what characters or, or what, what sailors are going to be moving to each, uh, to the to the inn every round. There's six rounds, so you get 30, so that's six, uh, five in each round. Uh, this area is over here goes from A all the way to K, and this will be where you place your your sailors throughout the game. Uh, everybody's got that. You've got these little mining nodes here and it tells you during the setup how many you place. Right there it says three, so you put three there. Same goes for the rest of them. These are houses that you'll be placing down in the game board as you collect miners and or as you collect uh, builders. Uh, you get four of those there. This is the exploration track here as you place explorers down. And then you got boats here. You shuffle this deck up here and then you place one boat for each letter based on the number of players is how many islands and they also have fronts and backs and there's multiple different islands that do a bunch of different things for a change of gameplay. I've included the three but there is two more players here and there's also these variable player powers in which you're going to go ahead and shuffle the deck here. You're going to go ahead and choose a first player, deal out five and starting from the last player he'll choose a variable player power, next player will as well and then the fifth player will get their last opportunity and the rest of them will get discarded. You won't use these for the rest of the game after that. This player will have some kind of bonus ability this player will as well and so will this one but to uh, make it an ease of play I'm just going to go ahead and forego that just to give you the idea though that they do in are included in the game I'll talk about it during the review. In the game there's a certain number of phases and you're going to be utilizing victory points and I'm going to go ahead and steal this rule book to make sure I get it everything right but first of all you're going to have the allocation phase so everybody's going to take five of their dudes and place them over here in the in the inn and then from there, secretly, each player is going to go ahead and place down their little sailors on areas on the board represented by these letters that go on these boats. So if I want to put a guy in this area, I got to choose A. If I want to put a guy in this area, I have to choose F. So maybe I'll do it like this. Something like that. And then the same will be said for the rest of these guys as well. So I'll go ahead and place two there, one there, one there, maybe a guy there. And then two guys there, one there, and two there. Okay, after that is done, then you're gonna move on to the boarding stage. Everybody's going to go ahead and reveal by dropping these things down. And then players in turn order are gonna go ahead and uh, are going to go ahead and place and they can go ahead and choose any letters they want with the sailors that they have and put them on any boat spaces they want provided that it matches so for instance if he's going first and maybe he wants to go on the sea so he's going to take this one and he could put it down on any of these spaces now depending on where you want to place there's different things that happen this one here's a barbarian and it displaces units on the island it's going to these are explorer areas and they get you get place your guys here along this track to score you points every round in addition there's bonus points in the game for having the most and then you're gonna have housing units uh, which once you get four of these guys here you're going to be able to build a house and that is going to be allocated by 15 victory points so you want that that's important uh, another thing to note is you could choose to place on a mining node now there isn't one here but there is one here 
and these ones here are captains and they're wild. You can use them for anything except for the barbarians. So if I wanted to uh, use a wild, for instance, I was there, I could put my dude there and that was going to net me one of these guys every round and getting me more and more mining equipment. And if you look at the player boards, it tells you that you get more points in the game for as many of these little mining ore nodes that you can get. So getting as many as possible is important. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the explore phase or explore area. Then uh, this player over here, he maybe sees that I'm doing that. So he'll go for an explore area as well. He's also got a C, so maybe I'll place that here in the Barbarian or maybe over here in the home area. And then it comes back to me. Now, do I want to place it on the C? I could, or I can go and push, put it in maybe F. So I can go ahead and put this over here. And then the next player is going to get a chance and he's got a C. So he'll be like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and drop one down there. And then this is going to C as well. So he'll go and drop one down there. And that's a full boat. No more can go there. So if I've got extras, this is just going to go over there. I can't go ahead and fill that boat anymore. So they're going to come here for the next round. But I still have a B, so I can go ahead and place it right there. He's got a B as well, and he'll take that space. And this player's got a G. There is no G. <laughs> There's no G. So I'll go ahead and say A. <laughs> Plays it over here. And then I'm out, so it's the next player here. And there's no G as well, so maybe put on F. <laughs> so this guy will go over here. And you're getting, you're getting the idea as to how it works, right? One over there, one over there, and then finally one over here. After that is done, the boarding stage is done, you're going to go ahead and move on to the uh, landing stage. And that's going to issue these boats that are filled to go up. So in this case, it's just this boat is filled, so it's going to go up. And then people from the front all the way to the back are going to fill the island. So this one over here is a barbarian. He can disallocate a character. So if there was a guy here, he could instead bump him off and return him to the inn. But because he doesn't exist, there's nobody that exists here, this would actually go back to his little uh, little inn there, his little, uh, little drinky area. Then this is going to come and drop onto the space here, and he'll do the same thing. And then this one over here is going to drop here, and then this one over here is going to drop on the housing area. After that's done, all the boats that went are going to get discarded, and a new one's going to pop up. These will remain there, and we're going to finish by doing the island phase. The island phase is going to net you victory points for each number of these units on the board. So green would get two points, and you go ahead and pull two points from here, place it on green's area. And then blue would get one point. So you look for a one and put it on blue. And then you're going to check this area. If you've built four of these guys here, you get 15 points instantly. And you can go ahead and stack them up as high as heavens. And then for each unit in these areas here, they're going to take one of these and put it into their pool. Now, that is how they all basically work. After that happens, you're going to take the next step, which is passing this little token to the next player uh, to the left. And then you're going to simply flip these back. And you're going to begin again placing more units down after selecting five from each of the the areas over here, whatever these are called, the warehouse. So some people are going to have more units to place than others based on things that uh, got pulled back or couldn't be placed. Now, also remember, you cannot place on numbers and or uh, letters that are not on the board. So it's only A through F for this game, but it could be different for other games, and it's always going to be random. I just selected A through F to make it easier on myself, but apparently it wasn't that much easier on myself because... I don't know, hard to read backwards. And that is basically how you play the game. At the end of the game, you're gonna score victory points for any additional, uh, for, for every single one of these you have based on the board here. So maybe if you collect 10, you'll get 30 points or whatever. This one here is 15 points for each house. And then there's a first place and a second place prize, or maybe just a first place prize, or all the way to a third place prize, depending on the number of units you have here. Whoever is the most is gonna get first, second, and then finally third is gonna be the least. And whenever a boat gets filled, like I said, you're just gonna flip over a new one. These things will generally go on the bottom of the deck if needed for a bigger player game. Last thing to talk about is keys, and keys are going to be acquired when you guys move across this track. Once that happens, you go ahead and you flip it over and turn it to the unlock section and place it on that island's unlock area. Then you read this, whatever it says. This one specifically says that an extra mine gets unlocked, and some of them are going to be end of game victory points. They all are different in their own unique way. And that's pretty much it. After six rounds, all of these guys should have been placed over to here, five at a time, and placed here, and then put on the islands. 
and you're going to do your end of the game scoring and whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of Embark. Okay, let's come up and talk about the game. All right, so let's talk about a couple caveats before we begin with my review. And the first is, as I told you before, as the explorers go down this track, they're gonna unlock keys. Those keys flip over and unlock certain spaces on the top of the board here, which can give you in-game scoring or other things. This one here says, once it's unlocked, miners on this island can score two points every time they want to ore and they can't. So they're always gonna be useful regardless of the fact that they're mining or not. This one says, whenever an unlocked token gets put here, an extra mine, an extra ore gets put on each of these things here. So this is some way in which the ore is going to be included uh but they're both different on each side. They both function in a different way. Uh, the other ones are these little cards here, which are going to be player, random player powers. Let's talk about a couple of them. Flexible travelers. Once per boarding stage, your voyager can board an adjacent boat instead of the one they are going to be boarding. So if you put it on a C, you can do a B or a D instead once per time you're boarding. Once per boarding stage, you can place one extra stowaway at the bottom of the boat. And uh, during boarding, it'll be counting as a captain, but it's going to be the last to be placed. Uh, you got the hot bunking. Once boarding stage, you can assign two voyagers to a single non-warrior berth. So you could choose if you wanted to to put two warriors on top of a captain space. Pretty useful. So uh, almost one more. At the end of the game, score three points for each set of one of each. Explore, miner, and colonist on the same island. Well, I give you some bonus points. So there's ways to get bonus points in these cards as well. There's a little nuance as far as how you're gonna be playing the game, not just based on the islands, not based on the boats, but also based on these variable player powers. So a lot of stuff going on, but very, very simple, right? You're gonna be selecting your, your explorers, placing them on boats, and the boats get filled, moving them onto the island, Placing them where they're supposed to be placed and getting points in one of three different ways, including the special unlock ability for each island after six rounds, whoever has the most points after calculating victory points is the winner. This game's great. Really, really, really good. TMG is blowing out of the water for me. Every time they bring me a game, I'm always really, really, really in love with it. And this is no exception. It's a lot of fun to place down your explorers, voyagers on the uh, on, in the secret hidden boards here. And all fits fit in a really nice condensed box too. I did not expect to be so much game in this box. This is teeny tiny, but it fits all that you saw and two additional players. And that's really, really cool. I really like that aspect of the game that it actually, uh, when it came out, I was just like, wow, I'm getting way more than I thought I was going to be getting. And then the game itself is very thick as well in, in terms of what you can do, but not in terms of how simple it is to play. I can explain it to you in 12 seconds and you'll get the gist of the game, but where you place makes such a big difference and how you displace people makes a difference. The different cards here can change the way you're going to play the game and gain you more and more points. And so you want to utilize those cards as best as possible. You can mess with players, but it's not to the point where you have to, and you don't necessarily need to do it to win. Win, well, there's certain points in the game where you can decide what's a better move. You never ne necessarily know what the best move is, I suppose, unless you're maybe an expert, but you get an idea of what is going to work best for you based on your cards or based on the island itself. Scoring points every round is very nice too with the explorers, but the miners are also nice because they're going to score you points every round as well. It's just going to count later on in the end of the game. How you play makes a difference in this game dramatically, and it can swing at the very end quite easily. Building houses is worth 15 points, right? But there's certain house builders in here that will make it much, much easier by decreasing that down to three instead of four explorers, or builders, I should say, and or whenever you were to place a worker down in a house and at the end of the game you didn't have four, you only had three, instead you get three points for each of those, which is worth nine points. That's nice as well in case somebody displaces you, which can happen. Those barbarians are nasty, but they're few and far between. But when they pop up and they mess with you, you always hope that somebody else will, met, will mess with uh, somebody else instead of you because you want to get along on that track as fast as possible. I always suggest in this game to, to put as much out as you possibly can. Make sure you get on those boats. You might want to try and be more diverse in this game, but if you get lucky enough to put all your guys on one single boat, you're going to get on that island all by yourself, which can play a huge benefit. Component quality is nice. I really like it. I mean, it's got the little cardboard things. They're nice and thick. They work very well. The player boards don't need to be thick, I don't think, or this as well, because you don't need to move them up or anything like that. Just, it sits nicely. And there's a lot of different playability in this game. I, I don't have much negative to say about it because I really, really enjoyed it. I think it just comes 
comes down to whether or not this is a game for you based on the fact that you have the hidden aspect of the game and the fact that you can mess with people a little bit. It's going to take a little longer for the number of players and I do recommend it at least, I would say at least three or four players. I haven't tried it at five though. Uh, I really, really enjoy this game and I like all the artwork as well. Uh, definitely a game I would recommend. Go ahead and take a look down below and bark if it sounds like something for you. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Alright guys, as always, I look forward to embarking with you next time.